there is no problem in saying that DNA would be a code in just the same kind of way as a computer code. It certainly is a code. I have been teaching genetics, evolution, and chemistry on the internet now for almost 15 years, just a couple months away from 15 years. Every time I talk about the genetic code, whether I'm doing a full-on lesson about it or I just mention the genetic code in passing, I am blasted with comments from a certain subgroup of the online internet atheist movement. They say the genetic code is not a code and we should stop saying that it is because creationists use this. Creationists say the genetic code is a code. Morse code is a code. Morse code was invented by a person. Therefore, the genetic code had to have been invented as well by, you know, in this case, they argue that it was invented by God. Well, the thing that the creationists don't understand, of course, is that coding systems signaling systems, these things actually can evolve. There's actually an entire subfield of evolutionary biology called signaling theory, which studies the evolution of signaling systems, communication systems in nature. In the past, signaling was studied between animals. Different animals will send signals to each other. And we know that the same principles that guide the evolution of signaling between animals works also between cells. I'm sure you know that your hormones, the endocrine system, is a signaling system. Testosterone goes into the the cells in my face and allows me to grow a beard, for example. Not a very good one, but, you know, it's sort of a beard. And we know that the same principles that guide the evolution of signaling between animals and between tissues in the human body, these same principles apply to signaling inside the cell between things like the genome and the ribosome. The genetic code, this thing we call the genetic code, is a collection of signals used by genes to instruct the ribosome how to build specific proteins. Francis Crick is probably the first person to speak of a, quote, genetic code. From his study of DNA, he thought this code allowed strings of DNA to act as reusable templates for protein production. The specific sequences of DNA or RNA nucleotides somehow determined the specific sequence of amino acids in a protein. In the late 1950s, Sidney Brenner, a guy who loved number puzzles, he started running raw math on protein sequence data. Assuming that a code actually existed, he was able to narrow down the possible types of codes down to just a few. In 1961, Brenner, Crick, and several colleagues ran a suite of experiments narrowing it down to just one. The genetic code must be a sequential, non-overlapping triplet code with three nucleotides functioning as symbols, codons, for each of the 20 amino acids. A few years later, the standard genetic code was fully cracked. Each codon was mapped to each amino acid. This is an evolved signaling system, and it functions in principle the same way that Morse code functions. In Morse code, dots and dashes act as signs or symbols that in this case represent letters, which are also symbols, so it's a little bit confusing here. (laughs) In the genetic code, codons, triplets of nucleotides, also act as signs or symbols, but instead of representing letters, they represent amino acids. Signaling systems can evolve. We know how signaling systems evolve. This is an entire subfield of evolutionary biology called signaling theory, usually with two L's instead of one. British people invented this field, so we'll go ahead and let them spell it wrong. It's their right. My first attempt to try to teach this and why it matters to this specific group of atheists here was a fairly complicated lesson where we went over how computer code works, like physically how it works inside of a computer and how the genetic code works physically inside of a cell. Most people who saw that went away like, oh, okay, I get it now. And they understood and they changed their mind. This is what intelligent people do. When they get new information, they change their mind. Some people, however, just didn't get it. And I don't think it's because they're stupid. I think what's going on here is I'm asking people to learn something that's fairly complicated. It's not that complicated, but it's it takes some effort. I'm asking them to do that, and they don't know who I am. They don't know why they should listen to me. So far as they know, I'm just going to waste an hour of their day, right? Technically, I am an atheist. I don't believe in gods or demons or anything like that. 
But most people don't know who I am or what my views are, so they think that I'm, I might be some sort of secret creationist trying to trick them into saying that the genetic code really is code. Okay, fair enough. So what I did is I got Richard Dawkins to come on my channel because, <laughs> you know, I figured, hey, Richard Dawkins, he's like the, he's like the Lord Mayor of Internet Atheism. So I'll get him on here. He'll say something about this and... That'll be it. I won't have to ever talk about this again. I've got Richard Dawkins saying this, and I've got my entire lesson on this. We're good to go. So Richard Dawkins came on my show. It was, by the way, it was difficult to get him on here, but I managed to get him on here, and this is what he said. I actually had a professor, a biology professor in the U.S., tell me that I should stop calling it the genetic code and stop saying that it's code. That's how far the opposition has gotten Yes. No, I think that's the wrong approach. I think it, it is a code. It's definitely a code. Um, and it is a code that's put together, not by a designer, but by natural selection. It's very easy to see how that can happen in principle. Details, of course, need to be worked out. But nevertheless, there is no problem in saying that DNA would be a code in just the same kind of way as a computer code. It certainly is a code. Um, uh, you can read it as a code. You can you could even transcribe. I think I put this in River Out of Eden could even transcribe a book uh, oh, into yeah. DNA and you could read it out again. You could, could preserve it in DNA and read it again. So I made that video, but that video also was not enough. People were upset at me for using an argument from authority. I had Richard Dawkins on. He just basically just made the claim. He didn't explain it very much. How does the genetic code evolve? So... I did a follow-up video, well over an hour long, an in-depth lesson on how the genetic code evolved. More specifically, it's about what we do and do not know about the evolution of the genetic code. Because even though we do know, in principle, how signaling systems evolve, there are a lot of details about the genetic code specifically that we don't know yet. It's a specific biochemical system. Many of the specific details about how that specific biochemical system evolved, they're actually not understood. But a lot of them are. So that video went over, in general, how do signaling systems evolve? How do coding systems evolve? Then it went into the details about what is and is not known about the origin of the genetic code specifically. And it is under that video that I received this comment today. YouTube user Tony Tiger Tony Tiger says, Stated casually, dude, is wrong. The correct point to attack is the false claim that DNA is a code. It is not. Tell you what, stated casually, dude. If you want to show that DNA is a literal code like those humans create and use, then you just need to do two things. Number one, provide a valid definition of the word, quote, code. The definition must be a widely accepted one that comes from a reliable source. A mainstream online dictionary will be fine, but you making up your own definition will not be. The definition must be one that applies to human-made codes such as Morse code, ASCII code, Unicode, etc. Note that the definition cannot be specific to biology such as biology, the genetic code, because that would not be one that applies to human-made codes such as Morse code. Two, you must show that DNA actually meets that definition. DNA must actually meet the definition literally, not just metaphorically or figuratively. P.S. You must use the same single definition of the word code throughout your argument. No equivocation. Well, Tony, challenge accepted. One quick correction, though. DNA is not code. DNA is a molecule. What I have said, and what I will be defending, because it's what's correct, is that the genetic code is a real code. In the genetic code, DNA nucleotides are used as symbols. With that little caveat out of the way, he's asking me to make an argument from authority. A dictionary is just an authority, right? I don't respect arguments from authority. The reason I left my religion, actually, is because I hated the fact that in my church, I was forced to just trust what the prophets said. I wanted to see the data for myself. I wanted to see for myself whether or not this thing is true. I wanted to see how this God stuff works, but I wasn't allowed to. I had to trust authority. So that's why I am not religious. So when I first saw this comment, I thought, whatever, I'll just ignore that. But then I was like, wait a minute. He did a really good job showing me what it would take to convince him. Maybe if I do this, it will serve as the final nail in the coffin for this anti-code thing that for some reason exists in this small part of the online atheist community. This 
online atheist community, they actually are obsessed with dictionaries. I don't know why. Like, they th somehow think, a lot of them do, that dictionaries are like how you know that a word means something. This comes up time and time and time again with debates online. It's like people don't understand how linguistics works. They don't understand that languages are constantly evolving. So what I did, instead of using the free pocket to Oxford dictionary that you can find in different places online, I actually paid money to Oxford to get access to their real dictionary, the meat and potatoes official Oxford Dictionary to give a proper video response. You want authority? Okay, here is your authority. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, there are three main definitions for code. The first is a collection of laws, rules, writings, etc. And they give a bunch of examples of those types of codes. But their second definition, code, is a system of signs or symbols. And then they go give examples of such systems. They talk about what this meant back in the day. Then they talk about this in linguistics. Then they talk about it in biology and in computing. According to the English Oxford Dictionary, the genetic code is a system of signs or symbols. And computer coding is a system of signs or symbols. Your Honor, I rest my case. But, of course, now we, we have the question, well, what is a sign or a symbol? So do you believe in the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-good notion of God? What do you mean by believe? Back to the Oxford English Dictionary, what is a sign? A sign is an indication, a token, or something that represents something else. Hmm, very interesting. That's exactly what a codon is in the genetic code. This is not a trick. This is not a word game. Codons really are symbols or signs. Codons, of course, are triplets of nucleic acids. They are triplets of molecules, but they are molecules that act as symbols for other molecules, amino acids. One type of molecule functions as a symbol for another type of molecule. What is the entity that is interpreting these symbols? What is the decoder? The decoder is the ribosome. The ribosome is the structure inside the cell that reads genes and uses the information in those genes to construct specific proteins, one amino acid at a time. This is not a metaphor. A codon, a set of nucleotides, these are molecules, a codon really is something that represents something else. In this case, an amino acid. They aren't transformed into amino acids. They represent amino acids inside this system and nowhere else. Outside the ribosome, they don't represent amino acids. It's only inside the ribosome. The ribosome is an evolved structure that reads codons. The genetic code is an evolved code. It is a natural code. And that's really the only fundamental difference. Of course, there are lots of specific details that are different between the genetic code and Morse code, for example. But the only fundamental difference between those two is that one of them evolved and one of them was invented by a dude. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean that we can only ever think of protein coding or protein synthesis from this code paradigm? No, of course not. In a different post, Tony Tiger talks about how there are certain scientists who have been complaining about the genetic code thing. They say it's just a metaphor, and they think that this metaphor is limiting how people are allowed to think about genetics. Now, those people, I don't care what their credentials are, they're just literally wrong if they don't accept that the genetic code really does function as a code. It does function as a code. We have just seen this. However, I do have sympathy for some people saying, oh, I don't want to think about the genetic code this way because I feel like it limits me in some way or another. Well, okay, that's fine. You can think of a person as an individual or as a collection of cells. Both of those claims are valid. You can think of a computer as something that uses zeros and ones, or you can think of a computer as something that uses pulses of electricity. I mean, that's actually, physically, that's true. Code in computers is a concept that we put on top of the actual physics. 
You can study genetics without ever talking about code. You can just study it from the, the physical interactions of different particles with each other. That's perfectly acceptable. That's perfectly fine. However, when someone tells you the genetic code actually does function as a code, it really does work as a code, it really is appropriate to call it a code, they are not lying. They are correct. So even if it's a creationist and they're wrong about everything else, they're right about this little specific piece. The genetic code really is a code. And if you deny this, you are the one who is wrong, not them, on that specific case. So, sorry. <laughs> According to the Oxford English Dictionary, a sign is something that represents something else. And a code is a system of signs or symbols. Computer code is a system of signs or symbols. The genetic code is a system of signs or symbols. If you want details on what we know and don't know about the specific origin of the genetic code itself, I've got a video for that. Go check that out. The end.